What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So today I want to see if I can make a replica of this little zombie cub statue that I've had for about six, seven years. And I want to see if I can make a duplicate of this and we're going to get it scanned and see how this works. But we'll be using the Creality CR Scan Ferret. So I'll get this opened up. Let's see what's inside and let's try this out. So I got this all hooked up to my computer via the little USB and you could use this on the Android app with the supplied cable, but I don't have an Android phone right now, so this does not support Apple. So I'm just going to be using my computer for this, but I downloaded all the software and I have it all connected and it says, do you want to start scanning and I'll click yes. And it gives you the option for normal face or body. And since this is just going to be a statue right here, I'm just going to go ahead and click on normal. And this is, I guess, size is middle. It's not small. It's not large, but 20 centimeters to 50 centimeters. That's roughly what this is. And I'm going to go with geometry and high quality and I'll do color. So all I have to do is click on new scan. And you can kind of see over in this corner that when I move this, it's kind of picking it up. So we want it to be in this perfect area. The exposure, I can adjust this manually if needed. So all really I need to do now is just go ahead and click start and we'll start scanning. And I can turn on this turntable and that way I really don't have to move this for a minute while you can see it's kind of spinning in the background and I'll stick the screen up so you can see it as well while it's going. But you can see that it's scanning it and once I kind of have that first full rotation, now I can kind of start to slowly angle it up to get some of the different angles and you need to kind of pull it back, move it forward so it stays in this perfect range. And right now I'm getting tracking loss, two valid, too few valid points. So I guess I'm not actually on it. So I need to get back into place. So let me get it back to where it picks it up again. You might have to hold it for a second. Now I can kind of start scanning the, the legs. And we'll get into the feet. And what I like about this is at any given time, I can go ahead and pause it if I need to adjust this at all, just to try and get different angles of it, which I'll probably have to do here in a minute, just cause I'll need to get underneath the arms, which I might have to move it to the end of the table just to be able to get those spots. So I'll go ahead and I'll click pause. And while this is still kind of turning, I'm just going to kind of move it to the end of the table. And now I can leave off where I was. I can re-hit start. I can get it back on here so it picks it up. And now I can kind of get underneath. And it looks like I'm picking up a few little background pieces. So I'm not too worried about that because I'm hoping that once I go to process that, some of those might go away or I can easily delete them in Blender or something like that afterwards. So I could run this for as long as I want in reality to where I kind of get the entire model and make sure that I get it all. Sometimes it kind of screws up a little bit, but I'm not too concerned about that. I can go through while it's paused and I can see what it's looking like and see if I missed any spots. And you can see like underneath the arm, it looks like I'm missing some spots, which is a tricky part. Same with underneath the chin. So those are the places I want to focus on more. 
So I may have to adjust the model a little bit and just maybe move it off the table a little bit more so I can get a little bit more underneath. So let's do that. So I actually stopped the rotation from this spinning so it doesn't keep doing. That way I can focus on getting underneath the chin and getting underneath this arm. So I'll go ahead and I'll click start again, continue. All right, and I think that should be good. And the beauty of this, and if you're not happy with it, you can always start over and try again. So once I have the whole model complete, I can go ahead and click on complete. Complete scanning, yes. And here we can see it again. And I'm gonna click on this one click process. I can go and do it manually, but I'm just gonna click the one click process and click yes. And we'll let this run and do its optimizing thing, and we'll be back right after that. All right, so here you can see, once it's done processing, what it all looks like. And I think this is looking much better. If I go into the no color, I'll have to fill the holes in and whatnot at the bottom, but overall, I think this is looking just fine. So I'll go ahead, I'll head over into Blender, get some of this cleaned up a little bit, and then we'll be back right after that. But in order to export this, all you have to do is just click on Export, and I can choose PLY, STL, or OBJ, depending on how I want to do it. So if I just do this as an object, I can just go ahead and click on Zombie 1, and go ahead and click Save. And that's it. So once this is done processing, I'll hop over into Blender and we'll get this all cleaned up. So here I am over in Blender. I imported the model. And I did already go ahead and, and clean up a few of the little straggly pieces that were left behind from the scan. But overall, I think it works perfect. There are a few little pieces that I will need to adjust and kind of clean up. And I'll go into sculpting and do that. But overall, I think it worked great. I think that's almost exactly what it looked like. But if I go into sculpting, I can just use this smooth brush right out down here. I'll set the strength right around 0.25. And I can go ahead and I can kind of clean up some of these spots that are a little bit rough. Now, I'm not going to go through this entire process with you, as it could take a little bit of time. But that's about it. That's all I'll be doing is just kind of cleaning up some of these spots that I think just could be a little bit better. So I'll do this off camera and get this all done. And then we'll come back right after that. Okay, so I added a little bit more definition to the shirt just to kind of make the seam stick out along with in the belt just to kind of make the holes. Same with the eye. This one didn't even come in. But this one did, which wasn't really necessary as it was technically painted anyways. But when I 3D print this, I wanted to kind of stand out a little bit more. So you know where those eyes are and the eyeballs. I fixed up the hair, cleaned up some of these little pieces that were kind of all over the place and connected. So I cleaned that up, smoothed out some of the foot a little bit, creased up the shoe on this one, and fixed some of the toenails that were kind of just... Not perfect, messed up a little bit, but it's much better now, so now you can kind of see where they are. So yeah, this didn't take long, probably about 15 minutes just to clean up a couple things. I didn't really do much to it, as that wasn't really the point. Otherwise, I would have modeled it from scratch. But I'm going to get this 3D printed. I'll go ahead and I'll send this over to Slicer. And yeah, let's get this printed. Let's see how this looks. All right, so the little mini zombie has finished and we can take a look at that. And I think it turned out really good. Now there are a few spots from where I removed the supports and uh, that's kind of typical and I was kind of expecting that. And I printed this really fast on my FL Sun Super Racer, so I probably could adjust some settings and make it a little bit better, but I was just doing this quickly to see how it turned out. And I think when you compare it 
I think that looks pretty, pretty good. So I will go ahead, I'm gonna print this one more time, but I will do the full version of this. So I'll go ahead, I'll do that, and we'll be back right after that. So the large zombie has finished. And as you can see right here, I think that came out really good. Now I did have a little hiccup on top and I ran out of filament. And when I swapped it over, I accidentally bumped the extruder. So it kind of got offset a little bit. So totally my fault. But overall, I think this came out great. I think the detail that it picked up came out almost perfect. As you can see, a side by side comparison I think it's almost spot on. Now I probably could adjust it a little bit more. I probably could make some changes in Blender and fix a few things. But overall, I'm really happy with it. Again, looking at the smaller version, I think it came out great. So yeah, super happy with how this turned out. Now I was just using the CR Scan Ferret by Creality. And I think overall this worked great. Now this does take a few adjustments and getting used to as you do need to kind of move this over to the side and adjust some things while you're scanning it. But the one thing I like about this is that I can pause it in the middle of scanning and I can come back to it in a minute, even if I just want to take a break or whatever. And I can scan this for 25 minutes where before I was using just an app on my phone and it took a while and I was limited to how many like photos I can technically take. And if you missed a part, you kind of have to start all over. And it, it, it was kind of more of a hassle than anything. But with this, I think it works awesome. It's way easier to use. I think the scans come out perfect, more or less. There are a few hiccups and I will need to make some changes, but I will definitely be using this more in the future for certain projects. This does have a nice long cord, as you can see. So having this hooked up to my computer really wasn't an issue at all. And I don't have an Android, so I can't hook it up to that. But if you do, this is compatible with that. And hopefully down the road, they'll make it compatible with an iPhone so I could use it with that. But just to be able to hook this up to my computer, I think it worked great. So I will put a link down in the description on where you can pick this up. Now it is a little pricey right now. It's going for about $350. Now that price may come down down the road. And I don't think that's too bad. I think it may be a little bit high. I think maybe around $199 would probably be a better deal for this. But overall, I think it works great. And I'll definitely be using this for more projects down the road. So I plan on casting this little guy out of metal. So if you want to see that, leave a comment, let me know. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out, and as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.